Hello friends, followers, channel members. Well, it's the last stream of the week for me, so I wanted to do something exciting. And what is better than a brand new route? Yes, we're off to Crete, um, but not the Crete we are normally used to flying. We're not off to Heraklion, we're off to an airport I've never heard of before, to be honest. Uh, Sitia, Sitia, however you want to uh, pronounce it. It's basically right at the uh, eastern coast of Crete. Um, it looks like an airstrip rather than an airport, to be honest, but e EasyJet are flying there. This is a real route that will... it's not started yet, presumably it's uh, it's a summer route, uh, as we fly from Naples down to, um, yeah, down to Crete, which is going to be awesome. Fly time around 1 hour 45 minutes, something like that, so we've got a great afternoon planned for you today. Welcome on board, all of you that are uh, joining us. I can see in the chat so many of you, uh, all channel members as well. Thank Thank you guys, hope you're having a good day. Hey Jay Hockey, Mark Williams here as well. Um, and uh, one other thing is this approach, <coughs> I can't remember the last time we did one of these, I'm going to have to read up on it as we fly. Um, this approach, it's a VOR approach. That is the only approach available here. It has to be a VOR approach. It's that small of an airport. Um, so it, uh, yeah, it, it is. It's going to be great fun. Of course, it's a perfect time to fly. We're going to get a gorgeous sunset, nighttime landing. Um, so plenty of things could potentially go wrong. I'm sure that I'm sure we'll be fine. Um, and if not, we're divert into Athens. But anyway, let's um, let's get going. I say it is a long flight, so we're going to. Um, we're going to crack on. Uh, welcome to everyone else who's joining us as well, and welcome to those of you on uh, Twitch. Good to see you guys. Thank you for uh, for joining us. Operational flight plan then is pinned into the chat if you are uh, watching on YouTube, and uh, here it is. We're uh, we're going to crack on because we've got. Uh, Lots to do. The trip wind is really helping us tonight, actually. 1 hour 35 minutes, actually, at the on-route flight time. A tailwind of 53. Payload of around uh, just over 10.5 ton. Uh, so we're nicely underloaded. Our um, landing weight is 57.6, which is okay. Um, we just need to check, though, that you know we're not going to be too heavy at getting in. So we will do a landing uh, a cal performance calculation as um, as well to see with regards to what, what extra fuel we want to take. Um, takeoff weight is going to be below max landing weight as well. Athens is the alternate. Flight level 300 is planned. We might be able to get that up a little bit. Runway 244 departure, runway 23. I think we could only land on runway 23. I don't even think there's a, there's a circle to land procedure here, but there's no other procedure to land on the opposing runway, so on runway 05. So um, I think the winds are all right. They're in our favour, though, tonight. Uh, plug fuel is about 6.9 tonnes, and uh, just scoot through the route. That's all fine. Yeah, look at that. It's a VOR DME approach. <laughs> I don't even know if we've ever done any of these. Uh, looks like there's no wind there, so that's that's nice. That's definitely in our favour. What's the uh, weather briefing like for uh, for this place? Um, winds two nine zero at ten. Oh, there is a bit of wind then at the moment. Uh, becoming a little bit later. Oh, that's later on tonight. Yeah, so we'll work on two nine zero at ten. Yeah, that's fine. That's going to favour us on runway two three then. Um, and Athens is fine. All the alternates there they're wide open. Uh, just a quick check of any NOTAMs for us here. I don't think we've got anything uh, in Naples. Uh, no, that's fine. Uh, oh, runway 05 is unusable, so we, I don't think we're going to be using that anyway, but that's fine. Um, the VOR part of the uh, city of VOR is uh, unserviceable, but the DME part is normal. That's interesting. Um, now, we won't be flying this like a you know a Cessna VOR approach, which is good because the VOR part's unserviceable, which wouldn't help us. Um, but we can uh, we'll basically use the uh, the GPS corners, and we will be flying this as a final approach um, procedure. Uh, taxiway Zulu is closed. Oh, that's Athens. All right, okay, that's fine. Uh, let's have a look at the on route weather then. Oh, what we got here? Uh, now we're skirting those cumulonimbus clouds. That's all right. That should be fine. Missing that, missing that. All right, no one route weather. Should be beautiful. Right, so what extra fuel are we going to take then? Um, I think if we, what, is it 6.9? Let's take, if we took 7.5 tons, just, you know, in case. Um, 
If we take seven and a half tons, then that means that we're taking about 0 0.6 tons extra, uh, which will give us a landing weight of uh, about 58 point let's go with 58 and a half tons all right we're gonna land 58 and a half tons then let's have a look if we can get in uh, let's grab the latest meta uh, no meta av uh, available Ooh. I thought it was 58 and a half tons um, oh Winds, what was it? It was 290 at 10, wasn't it? Mm, 290 at 10. I don't know what the temperature was. What was the temperature? Hang on. We've got it on the operational flight, but I'm not sure why it's not showing there. Um, sorry, I'm just scrolling through the operational flight plan on my other screen to get it. Uh, so this is the forecast uh, that we've got. Oh, actually, that's a good point. Um, that's forecast information that we've got showing just uh, just there. 290 at 10. Uh, we haven't got a temperature given. Oh, let's just put ISA condition temperature in. And God knows what the Q&H would be. Alright. Let's uh, <laughs> see how we, how we get on with that then. If we apply that meta... Uh, is this going to allow us to do it? Oh, where's the Metar gun? Oh. 290 at 10. 13 degrees. 1013. Apply. Oh. I never normally have to enter this manually. Right, so that's in. Yeah, runway two, three. Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, okay, that's fine. So with that extra fuel, we can get in and uh, and we're good. Cool. So I'm just gonna uh, get uh, get our aircraft loaded then. Uh, seven and a half tons, and GSX can do its thing. Right, hopefully that'll work. Okay, so that's done. Let's have a look at uh, the charts, get information we need off there. Aircraft is at stand 54. Uh, so that's a Tango 5 taxi. We'll depart via Echo if that's available to us. Um, and then, let's just have a look at the departure. So initial climb off runway... Two, four. That's the initial climb procedure. Transition altitude eight thousand feet. Yeah. So basically, immediate left turn. One eight zero knot speed restriction in the turn. Um, once we're through the turn, we're straight over to Gemma, and then it's to the Saw VOR, and then we're off to Galti. Have a flight level one one zero over Vesuvius. Sit on the left hand side for this flight. I'm Guarantee, if you need to choose your seat, the left-hand seat is the one you want to be for. That's got all the good viewers today. Um, okay, MSA 8,400. Lovely. All right, we've got everything we need off the charts there. Right, should we go grab, uh, go get in our aircraft and uh, and have a look? So, there she is. Oh, with Vesuvius in the background and a beautiful clear day as well. That looks, uh, looks gorgeous. Um, uh, my username is Pock. Uh, says, uh, from descent, can you walk through how to do the approach, please? Explain the steps of do it. We try and do that all the way through, if possible. Use so I will absolutely try and uh, and do that. Oh my word! Look at this. The legend Dark Fury is celebrating three years channel membership. How time flies! Thank you so much, Dark. Dark, of course, our channel livery painter, who's having a bit of an issue because. All deliveries he did for the Phoenix have now broke. Uh, so <laughs> he's having a hard time at the moment. But <laughs> once again, a huge shout out to Dark. Thank you, mate. Really appreciate, uh, really appreciate your support. And of course, your uh, livery painting skills. Okay. Let's get on board, hopefully. Um, 
cabin crew are going to start uh, sorting our aircraft out in a moment. William, also celebrating 31 months of channel membership. My god, you guys are ancient. I love it. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate the support, all the support you've given during that, uh, that time. Alright, so uh, fuel pumps obviously are off, packs are off, we're on external power, nav logo lights, they are set, uh, doors are open, spoilers, flaps, parking brake, and acupressure is good. Uh, we'll get the constraints on, initial climb is going to be 6,000 feet, company message, we'll check that in a moment, and then I need, I need the weather information here in Naples. Okay, let's grab this. Uh, so, 1905, light wind from the left as we depart, scattered 4000, temperature is 14, QNH is 1016, so no anti ice needed for our departure today. Awesome. Uh, we're on Unicom, guard frequency, and everything else is fine. 1016, that's all set up. Let's do, uh, let's do the box then. Turn that up, see if we get some, see if we get some music playing. Uh, okay, IRS just here. Three nav greens, aircraft status, CFM engines, air cycle is valid. Okay, let's do our init request. There we go. So, default call sign today because this flight hasn't started flying yet in real life. So, Alpine 3 for Alpha Mike. Cost index of 4, of course. Uh, Truffle 3 4. 6 3 8. 14 degrees is right. Wind request. Check the IRS in it. Stand 54, 40, 52, 9, 14, 17, 3 east. Good. Uh, just want to see what's happening with GSX. Is that all working? Has anyone's can anyone see a fuel truck? Or passengers? Is anyone loading our aircraft? Look, the door's open. Does GSX not want to load our aircraft? I might have to... Why is that not working? It's always normally works. Oh, I think GSX is bugged. <sighs> right, whatever. Because it's not refueling. Got the cargo doors open, though. I think with this would load for an infinity, wouldn't it, if we let it? All right. Uh, might need to restart GSX. Let's see what happens. Oh yeah, GSX definitely crashed. We'll start it again, see if it wants to help us. Anyway, whilst I'm waiting for that, let's crack on with this. So we are going to be cruising today. Flight level 300, wasn't it? Temperature of 49. Departure 26. Galti 7 Golf. That looks like the chart we had a look at, doesn't it? Yeah, that looks fine. And then. VOR approach, runway 23. Uh, start Zavis to Juliet. Uh, what veer is that going to be using? Never flown here before, so we should probably check that out. Oskim, I think. Uh, Oh, actually, it might be coming in via Zeros. Let's have a quick look. Um, oh, might, yeah, might be... Might be Zeros. Or Oskim. I don't know. <laughs> it could be either of them. We'll have a look on route. We'll go with Zeros for now. Uh, actually, no. We'll go Oskim for now. 
Anyway, what distance has that given us? That has given us a distance of 699, and my flight plan has got 701, so it's not a million miles away, is it? There we are. Radnav page then, let's get in the SOR, VOR, and of course the Naples. VOR, right, GSX, do you want to do something? Okay, let's uh, let's see if, can we request boarding again on here or will it not, will it not work? Let's reset all. Let's try again. Is it going to work this time? If it doesn't work this time, I'm just going to leave it. I don't think it's going to work. Alright, do you know what? Uh, reset all. And then we'll just load the aircraft. Do that instant. So, aircraft loaded. We could use GSX just for a bit of visual doc visual passengers. Oh no, we couldn't. It's broke. Alright. We'll not use GSX. We might use it for the pushback if it decides to work for then. Alright, on to init B page. We might have got the final load sheet then, if that's the case now. Let's check out that. See if it's, uh, see if it's there. <laughs> Look at all these load sheets. Uh, final load sheet. Oh, we'll use final load figures then. Fantastic. Uh, so, 54.7. Uh, 30.4. Oops. Alternate fuel, 1.9 tons, call it. We're going to take 7.5. See what this says in a moment. Oh, it wants 7.5 anyway. That's fine. I could have just pressed confirm block then. Takeoff weight then is 62 tons. C of G is 28.6. Takeoff performance calculations. Two, four, drive, flaps, one. No need to force target, anti ass off, packs off. Takeoff weight 62. Don't forget the decimal place. C of G, 28.6. And intersection echo. So that gives us 132, 135, 135. Transition altitude on the charts is 8,000 feet. Yep. And flaps one, flex 57. And now let's have a look at Sim Smart for the engine out procedure and stuff. Non standard, uh, 1217, so with uh, EasyJet 1017 as they now use 800 feet. Okay, and the secondary flight plan. Uh, so if we copy the active, 3000 feet direct to Iskia. This is the, one of the easiest engine out procedures ever. So we'll enter the hold, 056, right turns. Just to save time, because it's a longer flight today, I'm just going to leave that there. We've got the hold programmed in, so that's uh, that's fine. All right, um, I think we're ready to brief now. Just final check, there's no ATC around. No, there, um, there isn't, so we all 
boarded and everything, I think we are. Is GSX back up and running? Yes, it is. Hopefully it'll do the pushback for us in a moment. Okay then, uh, so quick brief as we as we go. We already looked at where we're going, where we're taxiing and uh, takeoff, etc. One thing to touch on then, the departure has a speed constraint of 180. Um, our airspeed is 186, so... Um, yeah, we um well, well yeah, all right, we'll have to we'll we'll maintain one eight zero. So that's gonna be flaps one as we go. Um one eight zero through the turn. It's actually there anyway, so it's fine. So departure will be flown manual speed and we will keep flaps one out until we have passed um until we've gone through that turn, so uh, yeah, we we we're, we're not even gonna pass our speed until we've done that because of the constraints, so that's fine. Um, it's not a long taxi. There's no traffic here, so we'll do a. Uh, we'll get both engines started as we push back. Uh, nice long straight taxi out down to holding point. Echo. Um, Kong's just uh, checked something for us there. Uh, VR is one three five, not one three two. Is it? Let me go back. Double check that. It is indeed. Good spot. Thank you very much. There we are, 135 is entered. Right, just make sure you guys can see that as well. There we are. Good spot, Kong. Thank you. Completing the uh, takeoff data confirmed by both pilots scenario just there. Then. Um, yeah, so we're just talking about the taxi here. That's fine. We'll go with uh, Echo. Departure, we've checked. Initial climb, 6,000 feet. First turn will be to the left. Noise abatement to departure. Archer. Mm, biggest threats or errors then here, obviously, we've got the terrain to the east of the airport, Mount Vesuvius, uh, etc. Uh, the engine out procedure holding point takes us basically west of the airport and keeps us safe over the sea, where we can hold safe at, uh, at 4,000 feet. Um, I think... That pretty much as a brief has, uh, has got us going. We're flying here at Autopart Beyond. Flaps one till we're through the turn, then we push level off, uh, uh, push for managed speed, accelerate away, and uh, and clean up. And I think that is uh, us all done. So let's see if we can get the APU up. We'll get GSX working. And uh, once the APU is running, we'll clear up the overhead. Should we try GSX now? See if it wants to play ball. Doesn't seem to be spawning any sort of uh, people around, does it? Which is a shame. Do you know what? I think we're just gonna. Oh, it's quit anyway. <gasps> okay, never mind. We'll get all the doors and things closed ourselves. Right, where's my checklist? So, cockpit preparation checklist. I'll have a look at that once that APU's up and running. Me. We didn't get any nice boarding music, did we? wasn't uh, wasn't all working properly. There we go. APU is up and running. Fantastic. All right. So ground crew, you're now able to remove the GPU. Give that a moment before the APU bleed comes on. See what the sign's on. And let's see if we can uh, push back ourselves then. One to two decimal eight. That's fine, let's kill the music. Alright then, so cockpit preparation checklist. 
Aircraft acceptance has all been completed. Fuel quantity is uh, not enough. We needed more fuel. We need more fuel. <coughs> Alright, I'm going to have to do this again. See if GSX had worked first time, this would have been perfect. We'll load the aircraft, do it instantly. Done. I now need to check that new load sheet. Final load sheet. Fuel, 7.5. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. So, what have we got now? Accept that. Takeoff weight, 61.9. That's fine. We planned 62. Um, and what's our C of G? 28.9. We planned 28.6. That's all fine. Lovely. Fuel on board, 7.5 tons is checked and balanced. Seatbelt signs are on. It is, we have the three nav greens in the bar of QNH 1016. APU is running, let's get a pack on. And uh, let's, uh, let's try and start the push then, shall we? Naples traffic, Alpine 34 Alpha Mike, stand 5 4, pushing back facing north on Tango 5. Might have to use pushback helper today. Tug is connected. The before start checklist. Parking brake is on. Takeoff date has been confirmed. Windows are closed. EFB is on flight mode. Doors are closed. Not yet armed. Uh, oh, they are. Excellent. Closed and armed. And the beacon light is on. Alright, let's go. Parking brake released. Not hearing many cabin sounds today. It's a bit weird. Uh, username the checklist I'm using is available to download on our Discord server, which is now has now been updated in uh, on Twitch, so you can uh, join our Discord server if you uh, if you wish. I have to do this manual pushback, so I'm just looking out the window. Right, engine mode selected to ignition, start engine one. Cabin crew, arm doors and cross check. Ooh. Fantastic. Should have some gorgeous scenery as we depart. Ask for your attention while we take you through the safety procedures on this aircraft. A safety card is in your seat pocket, showing the exit routes, oxygen masks, life jackets, and brace position that you must adopt if you hear brace. Engine brace. one is stable. There are two emergency exits at the rear, four in the middle, and two at the front. Set parking brake. Start engine number two. Floor lighting will guide you to an exit. Please be aware that your nearest exit may be behind you. In an emergency, leave all cabin baggage on board. Your seatbelt is fastened, adjusted, and released as shown. It must be fastened when the seatbelt signs are on, and we recommend that you keep it fastened at all times. If the air supply fails, masks will drop from above you. Pull a mask towards you to start the oxygen. 
Put the mask over your nose and mouth. Uh, username, it's in Old the in pilot's briefing room, the checklist. Put hey, Crisis, good to see to you. Adjust. Put on your own mask before helping others. If we land on water, take the light. Put it over your head. I love that the PA cuts the out when the relays switch over. Click together. <laughs> it's just a brilliant touch. And pull the strap to adjust. <laughs> Do not inflate it and inside the aircraft. Well. When outside, inflate by pulling the toggle. If it fails to inflate or needs topping up, blow into the tube. There is a light and whistle for attracting attention. We also carry flotation aids for children. Your Actually, that's not required. Must now be stowed, armrest down, window blinds open, and seatbelt fastened. We wish you a pleasant flight with EasyJet. Uh, let's look to go. After start checklist, then anti ice is off. Here comes status is checked. Pitch trim is 28.6 and rudder is uh, neutral. It's a nice, pretty straightforward check uh, taxi. This and uh, oh, what's going on here? It's alright, I'm having real life control issues as one of my cables has just got snagged on something. What's that? Oh, if anyone who loves having clean cables underneath their desk, they would have an absolute fit if they saw what's under mine. Naples traffic, I'll find 3 for Mike Taxi now via Tango 5, holding point Echo, runway 24. Right, let's go. So let's just get on the taxiway nice and straight and then we'll do a flight control check. We'll brought that out. Okay, so control check. Full left. Full right. Neutral. Full up. Full down. Neutral rudder. Full right. Full left. Okay, taxi checklist, flight control has been checked, flap setting, config 1, FMA, climbing up, blue 152, 6000, blue radar, predicted which you're on, ECAM memo, just waiting for the cabin crew, EFB is stowed and disconnected. <coughs> Side stick fault, disregard. Do you know, it doesn't matter where I set my null zones, I cannot get that thing to stop flashing up. Cabin crew, seats for takeoff. Hi Gavin, all the passengers are on board and we're ready to go. I'll bring you a cup of tea after we've taken off. Oh, cup of tea, but lovely. That'd be great, thank you. Oh, just picked up a little bit of speed there. Let's uh, slow that down. Right, we want Echo, which is this turn. Uh, 
Oh, Wiffy, I was never that bothered about crumpets. They're not my favourite. Give me a cake instead. Okay, we've not heard anyone on Unicom. Approach path looks clear from what we can see. Naples traffic, Alpine 3 for Alpha Mike, lining up runway 24 via Echo. Departure to the south, Galti 7 Golf. So just confirming now that Taxi Checklist ECAM memo has got takeoff and no blue. Lineup checklist then. Cabin is secure. Takeoff runway 24 confirmed via Echo. The uh, TCAS STA RAM packs 1 and 2 are off. So who's going to stick with us for the full flight then as we uh, watch the sun set over the Greek Isles and head to this small little VOR approach airport in, uh, in Crete. Okay, engine one critical, takeoff, start chrono, 50% and one set. Stable, take off thrust, man flex, SRS runway, auto thrust blue. The sound of the buzz sore engines. V1, that uh, correction, 100 knots, not V1. V1, rotate. Positive climb, gear up. First climb, climb. Get autopilot one engaged, so we can have a gorgeous look at nipples as we uh, as we depart. Vesuvius there in the distance. So that speed restriction is there. We're through the turn now, to be fair, so. Probably look to start accelerating. Got no ATC, so we'll uh, pop in. 12,000, which was the next constraint. So open climb 120 blue. Is that speed constraint all the way to Gemma? I didn't think it was. So quick look. It is there, but it's not in the. Uh, it's not on the chart. Ladies and gentlemen, please keep your seatbelt fastened while the seatbelt sign is on. We recommend that you keep your seatbelt fastened whenever you are seated. Toilets are located at each end of the cabin. Remember that smoking is not permitted at any time. This includes e-cigarettes. Clear that out. In just a few moments, accelerate we'll away. In-flight service, offering you the chance to purchase from our selection of fresh food available today. All details can be found in your in-flight brochure. You can also purchase a selection of hot beverages together with drinks and snacks from the bar. The speed's passed. We accept Clean payment up in the aircraft flaps there. Most major Spoilers purchases and debit or credit cards. The correct change would be greatly appreciated. And if we could be of any further assistance, then just ask us as we join you in the cabin shortly. Hey, Chumi. Good to see you. Uh, Mark says you should be there in July. What, the actual airport we're going to or just Crete? 
Uh, Team Silver says, oh, for some reason, all the Greek island airports are blurred out on Google Maps. Uh, yeah, I, I do know that. It must be a, a government thing. I don't know. No idea why. Absolutely gorgeous day, though, isn't it? So the sun will be setting very soon. Oh, Matt, you'll be in Naples. Ah, oh, fair enough. Not Crete. Fair enough. <laughs> you'll be... You'll be where we've just departed from them. Okay, spoilers, flaps, gear, can uh, get the lights off. Quite a few new routes coming up for EasyJet this summer, so we'll have to see if we can get on board with a load of those. Copal, how can you change the flight level during the flight? What do you mean the? Uh, oh, hang on, that's just uh, ten thousand feet. Airport's on there. Radnav, clear that out. A secondary flight plan. Copal the active and cost index zero. Uh, do you mean? So if you plan on just flying at 30,000 feet and you want to fly at 35,000 feet, for example, well, you wouldn't do that, but 34,000 feet, then, then obviously, I assume you don't mean just on here, you mean in the actual flight plan itself. You just go to the progress page and pop in your new, crew, your new cruise altitude down there, and that would, uh, that would update that for you. Speaking of which... I think we can pretty much get up to 30,000 feet now, can't we? Yeah. So let's just continue that climb. Let's climb up, climb 300 blue. And that's a gorgeous view of Naples and Vesuvius down there. <coughs> I do love seeing clouds lower than the level of some of the mountains because that is something where Microsoft Flight Simulator excels. If you remember older versions of flight simulators, the clouds just sort of cut in, didn't they? To the terrain. Uh, Wiffy, how does the flight computer uh, get the optimum flight level? Um, that's all to do with winds uh, and the weight of the aircraft as well, fuel on board, etc. It's a very clever computer. <laughs> Tony says it's great to see daylight during a flight. Microsoft Flight Sim is amazing. Oh, it is. Won't be daylight for very long, though, I don't think. We're flying away from the sun, aren't we? Hey, Aaron. Good to see you. Uh, Copilot, if you're at 330 and you want to go to 350, how do you change it on the flight management computer? Uh, you don't change it on the flight management computer. To change, change the altitude, you, you, you change it here on the FCU. Let's get a seatbelt signs off. I'm going to have to clear out these company messages because that ECAM message is going to bug me.
the salt because GSX didn't work. Got like a load of load sheets. There we go. That's nicer. And I've still got an in-op side stick. Uh, Crisis says it's heading to Crete in a few months with Jet 2 from Belfast. And you hate flying. <laughs> Hopefully watching this channel has may maybe made you feel a little less hateful towards flying. Aaron Flood, that is incredible. Gifting 10 EasyJet Sim Pilot memberships to the community. Aaron, thank you so much, mate. Um, so welcome to our new members. Yardy, Jamie, Danny, Jamie, Craig, Stefano, Jen as well. La Pampara. BMLock and Gareth. Huge thanks, Aaron, there, but that is really, really kind of uh, you, Aaron, and a great way to support, support the uh, support the channel as uh, as well. That's it now, guys. You can all use the special emojis, and of course, access the members lounge on our Discord server as uh, as well. I'm hoping once things have calmed down uh, work-wise, uh, we're going to do a sort of special uh, member stream whereby I might even um, be looking at showing off the uh, the new AI ATC software. There's a couple of available, so I can maybe look to choose either VFR or IFR. See how they are progressing. Uh, call co pilot with the FM, see the flight management computer, the cruise level. Yeah, you have to change that. So let us get up to our cruise altitude, and then we'll go higher, and I'll I'll show you show you how it is. Digital content says one whiskey, please. <laughs> well, I think we can probably turn on the cloud bot now, as we're uh, flying long enough today. Start spending those points. Hey, crisis! <laughs> Appreciate that, mate. Thank you. Turn the brightness of uh, these screens. We we'll turn them back down again once it goes dark. I don't know if we'll get an ATC coming online now as we're slower heading towards the evening. People finishing work, maybe get some ATC controllers. Yardi, you dispatched your first flight today and really enjoyed it. Yardi, I'm, I am presuming that's in real life. Um, but what an amazing day. You'll never ever forget that. That is, uh, that is amazing stuff. Uh, Jen says, watching from the uh, office, um, have a great flight. Cheers from Montevideo. Wh where's that? I want to say it's South America somewhere, but I could be wrong. Stefano says I've chosen the shortest of the three airports. I didn't. I didn't choose them, Stefano. The flight plan has chosen them. The pencil pushers in the office at EasyJet decided, well, this will be a nice route to fly. So there we go. Uh, Jen, capital of Uruguay. Oh, fair enough, Jen. I, w I would not have known that. If someone would have asked me the capital of Uruguay, I, I don't even know w where I would have guessed at, to be honest. Uh, and you saw the video yesterday about Beyond ATC. Yes, obviously the pricing structure there has really changed, um, which I think is a good thing. It certainly opened it up to to most, and you know, if you listened to the sounds that were coming out, I mean, don't get me wrong, the premium sounds are just incredible. They are so lifelike, and when I've just been sort of heading to different parts of the world, and you hear just even the Atis, just listening to the Atis um, with sort of regional 
regional accents. It's absolutely brilliant. Uh, Jane, you have one of the nicest airports in the region, sadly with almost no traffic. <laughs> oh, that sounded like Doncaster Sheffield Airport. Uh, Co-pilot, right, we're nearly at 30,000 feet, and we are going to see if we can fly higher. Um, see if we can take advantage of the winds. Let me just have a look and see what the winds are doing according to the OFP. So we're currently, oh my god, 200 miles to Rutom. That's about 45 minutes, uh, no it's not, it's about 30, 30 minutes to go. So I am just going to have a quick look and see what the winds are doing. Uh, right, this is what we wanted. So, Rutom just there. Three, zero, zero. Winds two, nine, two at six, six. Yeah, I reckon we might be able to get a bit to, if we go to five or three, four, zero, we might get a bit more wind. Um, let's have a look here as well then. 340 is going to be fine for us. 360 might work actually. And that is uh, is saying that is the optimum. So let's do it then. We're now, look, we're at Alt Cruise, which means this is the altitude that we've got in the flight plan um, that we told the aircraft that's what we're going to be flying at. Okay, but now what we're going to do is. Oh god, I can't see the screen because, uh, because of the sun. Alright, we'll watch it on the primary flight display. Okay, we're going to go flight level 360. So let's set uh, flight level 360. Zero, which we've done by turning this, and then we're going to uh, just pull that. So we're going thrust climb, up climb, three six zero blue. So obviously starting to climb. Now if we come down here, look, because we have gone up, it has automatically gone up for us. Yeah, so that's fine. Now, however, if we decided actually three six zero is not going to work for us. We need to go, we can only do 340, so let's now just set that to 340, again, setting it on the uh, FCU. So we've now set 340. Notice, this has not changed, because we've selected a lower altitude. So this kind of works upwards, but downwards, we'd need to tell it uh, that we're only going to 340. In that case, we would need to physically type in 50340, and we'll go with that. And that, all that means is that when we level off at 340, then this will, instead of just saying ALT, it will say ALT Cruise and gives a nice smooth ride. ALT Cruise basically means that the autopilot will control the aircraft and keep it within 50 feet uh, either side of flight level 340 to try and give us a nice smooth ride rather than being quite you know, constrained to, um, to 34,000 feet. So hopefully, Copper, that has uh, explained that and made a little bit of sense. Well, there we can see the uh, the bottom end of Italy then, beneath us. Not got much traffic around, is have we? There's uh, no contrails or anything. Uh, James says, even the basic voices in um, Beyond ATC are good enough, though. For me, the real great thing is because of the, the AI. You're now able to speak the way you want to and not have to learn the way it wants to speak. The voice recognition of Beyond ATC is very, very good. Um, yeah, it, it will pick up pretty much uh, any dialect accent um, and the way it works, which is... Uh, which is great, like you said, you can just relax, talk normally, and it should pick it up. Um, which is great. Hey, Emma, good morning, afternoon, good evening, good night. <laughs> but yeah, those premium voices are just, are just amazing. Uh, Fruitbat says the guest voices should be interesting. Have you have you heard mine? <laughs> it makes me smile every time I hear it. Um, what what's really amazed me is that they asked if they could use my voice as uh, like a co-pilot voice for it, 
Um, they asked if they could use it, and I said, yeah, of course, if it doesn't take up too much time, you know, I, I presumed I would have to read um, loads of different things out, and I thought, oh my word, it's going to be like when the commentators, you know, in FIFA have to sit there and record all of the names of the players, and it'll take hours. So I said, yeah, I'm happy for you to do it, but it's going to depend on the time it's going to take. And they went, oh no, it's okay, we've already sampled your voice from all the videos and things that you've done. Um, here, have a listen. I was like, oh my god, how have you done that? AI and technology is just ridiculous. Right, we're going to get up 360, so we'll just continue that climb. Thrust climb, open climb, 360. And you'll see once again, because we've gone up, it's changed it. So, we just see if I can. Uh, I'll see if I can bring that up so you can so you can hear it. Because honestly, it's it's incredible. Let me just have a quick look. See if I can uh, see if I can uh, find. Let's see if I can find this voice and get it to play for you. Uh, oh, here we go. Well, hopefully this should uh, this should work. Hello, friends, followers, and channel members. This is Easy Jet Sim Pilot, and I'm a guest voice in Beyond ATC. <laughs> it's almost like a posh version of me, without the Yorkshire accent. <laughs> But they are. They're. I do think they're great. But yeah, it. Uh, the fact that I didn't have to do anything for that. <laughs> Renlim says, "How do we know if it's the real you now?" Yeah, well, quite. One day I won't be required. There'll be an AI bot version of me just doing all this for you. Mike says it's like of a southerner. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's almost like they've taken a, a Queen's English AI bot, merged it with my voice, and turned me into a Cockney. <laughs> Redlin says we need a secret tea question. Uh, a, fav a secret question, favourite tea brand. Yeah, well, you know my favourite tea brand. I can't say it out loud because, well, you never know. I might just get a sample. Uh, my username, I've got no idea what kind of AI systems they are using. I'm not involved with anything like that. So I literally just said, yeah, you can use my voice, enjoy it. Um, and they did, somehow. But, just again, just listening to... So, th these are basic voices. So, these are now free voices. You won't have to pay a penny for these. You buy the program for £30, and then that is it. Um, so, this is a basic UK voice. This is a basic voice sample. UK mail. Speedbird 8829er. Runway 27 right. Taxi via Alpha. Link 12. Bravo. Charlie. And then, you can obviously get a, a, a premium edition of that, which is the one that you would have to pay for, like, every 10... 10, 15 flies. This is a premium voice sample. UK mail, Speedbird 8829er, runway 27 right, taxi via Alpha, link 12, Bravo 3, Charlie. I mean, that sounds real, doesn't it? And that sounds like a guy's actually sat there and recorded that. Let's listen to some more of the basic ones. The, um, I'm just wondering if I could just turn the, uh, see if I can just turn the sound down. Um, in the Phoenix aircraft, it's a bit, bit loud. Um, can I turn the sounds down? I might not be able to turn the sound down. Oh well, hopefully you can hear it over the top of the uh, airframe noise. 
But yeah, this is a basic US voice for those who fly in the USA. This is a basic voice sample. US mail, United 259er, climb and maintain 1515,000. Altimeter 29998. Mark, that's the guy I was trying to uh, trying to think of. Yeah, I listened to that UK premium voice. I'm going to play it again. This, I, the first time I heard this voice, I thought, I've heard that guy doing the weather. I'm certain of it. This is a premium voice sample. UK mail, Speedbird 8829er, runway 27 right, taxi via Alpha, link 12, Bravo 3, Charlie. Is he on the BBC or something? But I swear to God, that is the weatherman. <laughs> uh, Bjorn, do we have it with distortion? No, they are basically just on the on the website, um, and they specifically have them um, without distortion, purely uh, because then they uh, you can hear them clearly. But when you are actually you know flying with it uh, in the program, um, then it um, yeah then it. It does have that sort of VHF distortion, yeah. Yari says, yeah, sounds like the guy from the Met Office. <laughs> everyone else everyone else is agreeing. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I, I'd love to know who it is. I wonder if that is him. So, who have they used for the premium voice in America, then? Is, is, is this some famous American? Hang on. This is a premium voice sample, US female, United 259er, climb and maintain 1515,000, altimeter 29er, 9er 8. I have no idea who that is. But yeah, that's the that's the uh, American. Uh, let's just go back to some basic ones because I like hearing the free ones. Um, these weren't going to be free, but they are now. This is basic German. This is a basic voice sample, German Male. Lufthansa 253 Super, identified, climb to flight level 060. Yeah, okay, so that's, that's not bad, is it? Just realized we are top of climb, hang on. Let's just do some top of climb rubbish. Um, make sure we're not flying a broken aircraft. No, everything looks good and comfortable there, doesn't it? Even my side stick's working again. Uh, and the overhead, that's all fine as well. Uh, yeah, so that was the basic German one. Uh, basic Australian? This is a basic voice sample. Australian male. Qantas 2953. Descent to flight level 070. Clear direct tiger. <laughs> direct tiger. Uh, larger life. Am I affiliated with Beyond ATC? No, not at all. Um, so they have provided me with the uh, beta version that they are testing at the moment to sort of try out and showcase as well on uh, on certain videos and things like we did yesterday. Um, but that is it. So I'm I'm sort of not on the payroll or have any sort of invested interest in how the program um, does. But I, I am amazed at it. I mean, like now we're obviously on the Vatsim network, which I love, absolutely love that because you're flying with real people. Um, obviously, uh, but we've got no ATC, so it would be kind of nice, wouldn't it, particularly when Beyond ATC used their traffic injection as well, just to sort of fill the air with, with sounds and hopefully real voices, which, um, which would be nice. Um, again, another free one. This is, uh, this is Dutch, so if you're coming into uh, Schiphol. This is our basic voice sample. Dutch Malay, Euroing 7201 Heavy, turn left heading to 80, vectors for traffic. So, I mean, you can have the basic ones turned on for, because you can mix and match, I think. So you can have your basic ones turned on for, um, uh, for AI traffic and, uh, and such, but then have premium ones turned on for the controller speaking to you. Um, the last sort of basic one I've got here is a Polish one. So let's have a listen to, to Poland. This is a basic voice sample. Polish female. Lot 5458. Monitor tower on a 32 decimal 45. Bye bye. <laughs> Mark, Mark and Tony both saying that's gold member. <laughs> uh, James says that's why he doesn't fly on Vatsim. Because the skies are empty. Yeah, I, d I do understand. I do understand. 
All right, so they were all the free ones. Um, let's listen to the ones that you would eventually, you know, have to have to pay for. Let's go back to Germany for uh, for that. This is a premium voice sample, German male, Lufthansa 2539er, super identified, climb to flight level 060. Again, it just sounds so real. It's it's brilliant. It's, is it worth that? Ten pound every sort of ten, fifteen flights. Australia. Let's have a listen to the Australian. Again, remember these are premium. This is a premium voice sample, Australian male. Qantas 2953, descent to flight level 070, cleared direct Tiger. <laughs> Do you know what I loved about that? You heard the German one before it and then the Australian one. Did you see, see the subtle difference between the two? The German one was like, Lufthansa 358 super, turn flight level, uh, climb flight level 350, heading for, uh, it was just, you know, really rushed and direct and to the point. Then the Australian came along and was like, oh yeah, Qantas, just fly wherever you want and let us know where you can see the airport. <laughs> That's so relaxed. <laughs> How how realistic? Uh, let's go with uh, let's go with New Zealand again. This is a premium voice for New Zealand. This is a, a premium voice sample. Uh, New Zealand male, a New Zealand five nine eight alpha, cleared direct to taper, um, turn right, maintain five thousand. So yeah, awesome again. Um, premium Dutch. This is a premium voice sample, Dutch mail, Eurowing 7201 heavy, turn left, heading 280, vectors for traffic. Oh, that is awesome as well. And we're going to get vectored for traffic, which is fantastic. And then finally, uh, oh no, there's a couple more. Oh, so there is a, there is a Scottish uh, voice as well. Let's, uh, let's check out the Scottish voice. This is a premium voice sample, Scottish mail, speedbird 8829, runway 27 right, taxi via Alpha, link 12, Bravo 3. Charlie. I swear to God I've heard that voice as well before. Who was that? Anyone recognise that voice? What was, uh, what did, uh, who, do, who does that sound like? I'm sure I've heard that voice before. Uh, larger Life, now you can use Basic with controller for free. As well. That is correct, Larger, that is right. All these Basic voices are now, uh, are now free. Jamie says there's no way that is a Scottish voice. He could understand every word that he's saying. <laughs> you need someone with a heavy Glaswegian accent. Um, and yeah, premium Polish then. This is a premium voice sample, uh, Polish female, lot 5458, monitor tower 132.25. Bye bye. And at which point your EasyJet SIM pilot co pilot can respond. Hello, friends, followers, and channel members. This is EasyJet SIM pilot, and I'm a guest voice in Beyond ATC. <laughs> it still makes me smile every time I hear it. <laughs> uh, Andy says, as a beginner, that is much easier for me to listen to than the superhuman speed you see most people talking with air traffic control. You just can't understand it sometimes as they speak so fast. I understand that, particularly if you're in a uh, part of the world where it's not sort of like your normal... Um, your normal accent, uh, so to speak. Uh, should we just get some en route weathers as well then? So, um, let's have a look what we've got. Let's just send some of these off. Receive messages. Is it ops? We were eight minutes late. That's not bad, considering the problems we had with the, the ground crew. Send that off. Um, send uh, Athens off as well. See how that is. And Mike says we've got my intonation spot on. <laughs> Wonder what happens if you ask an AI voice sampler to uh, come up with a Yorkshire accent. Uh, Larger Life says, don't think it's worth the premium unless you're super into the accents and immersion. That's the nice thing about it, though. It's going to be each to their own, isn't it? They're going to do... Um, yeah, can literally do it as you, uh, as you wish, so to speak. And then it's completely up to you. If you want to pay for it, then go for it. And remember, of course, it ships with enough to do um, a, a few flights with... Uh, with premium, so uh, so yeah, it's a, it, that is available right from the off. 
Right, Latti is wide open. Is that Tirana? Um, and Athens is wide open as well. It's good. Where are we flying to? L G S T, not S H. So I don't know if there's any weather actually coming out of that at the moment. Oh, look. Uh, DC Girl says I can leave my guest voice with the wife when I'm away for work. Oh, it'd just be um, telling the kids, please don't do that. Eat your tea. Tidy that up. Why have you done that? Put that away. Don't eat that. Stop punching your sister. Yeah, I need to sample all of those. Look at that lovely tailwind pushing us down there. What time do you reckon we're going to get in then? About quarter six. That's good. That's, that's decent. As long as we get in first time. A reminder, of course, um, whilst we're sat here in the cruise, if you want to be browsing for some new scenery, you can check out uh, Innibills, link at the top, and uh, also the uh, video channel description uh, at the bottom as well. Every scenery you purchase via those links does support the channel, so if you are in the uh, market for some new scenery then uh, you can support us at the same time there is um, great offers on Barcelona at the moment and also for um, also for Ibiza as, uh, as well in fact I think we've got a copy of Barcelona to give away I'd forgotten about that <laughs> we we might have to give Barcelona away on this stream. <coughs> it's the MK Studios Barcelona. Uh, Steve, any idea when Beyond Entity will land on the market? Not yet, I'm afraid. Uh, Fruit Bat says, your next door neighbour had a parrot that used to tell the children off. It's all he ever heard. <laughs> I know. Oh. I keep saying I don't want to be one of those parents that just yells at their kids. I really don't. I don't want to be a parent that just yells at their kids. But, oh my God, sometimes they make it so difficult. Uh, Tony says, you bought a beat after last night's stream. It looked awesome. Tony, did you think like me? Well, the best things about that on the approach was the nightclub and the lights flashing as you were coming in. I kept looking at that rather than the runway. How very off-putting. You probably wouldn't do that in real life, of course, but I looked at it and just thought, oh my god, <laughs> what great scenery this is. The fact I'm spending more time looking at a, looking at a, a flashing light in the sim. But yeah, even inside the terminal, I thought it looked really nice, so... I urge everyone to click that link and go and check out the Ibiza scenery, because it is, uh, it is very good. Yeah, the nightclub did need a few people dancing in it, didn't it, Tony? And obviously you can do that, because the St. Martin scenery has people on the beach doing that. So, it it is possible. Hey, Organ Aviator, is this a real ops flight? It is indeed. Yep. A real route that will begin in the summer months. A brand new route for EasyJet. And they're flying here... Um, from a lot of different places as well. Uh, I'll just double check... So, they'll be flying, it's the, it's hitting the Italian market, so they're going to be flying from both Naples and Malpensa in the summer, when, uh, when that comes. So, it should be, uh, should be good. Uh, 
Right, let's take this time to have a look at what we've got planned arrival-wise. See how it looks. Oh, that looks good. We've got the Ark. Coming in via Xeros. A 12 mile DME Ark. And if we just confirm that, hang on, I'll show you this. There you go. So, yeah, we come in 14 miles from the. <laughs> I know how I would want to abbreviate that. <laughs> the Sierra Hotel uh, Tango VOR. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 40 miles from there, we then fly a 12 mile DME arc, getting down to 2,400 feet. Then, at Oskim, we fly the final approach track, 224, and at 7 miles, or before 7 miles, at 2,400 feet, we then... Uh, Yeah, we then use final approach mode to get in. Oh, it's a slightly shallower approach as well, 2.87 degrees. Circle to land, daytime, southeast, uh, not authorised southeast of the runway, so basically you have to fly, if we were going to fly in the other, uh, land on the other runway, we'd be flying around uh, to the north, so making a right turn. And then, circle to land at night is not authorised. Uh, runway visual range needs to be 2.4 kilometers, minimums 1300. Good stuff. I'm just wondering there, look, we've got a Xeros marked as an initial approach fix rather than an Oskim which has got a much nicer 12 mile arc so um, let me just see if we can just change that see what the veer is in there I've got Oskim there as the veer look uh, if we change the veer to Xeros what will that do? oh it's pretty, pretty much exactly the same it's just got a slightly nicer arc there hasn't it so insert that That is slightly better. Oh well, we're happy with that. Right, red clouds. And uh, a sunset. Has it gone yet? No, not, not quite. It's close. Uh, DC says he bought Barcelona uh, this week. Must say, all the scenery from Innibuilds and MK Studios are great. Uh, I agree, yeah. Can't really go wrong with them. And I really do like the A300 that they, uh, they have as well. If you like doing cargo ops, that is the aircraft to get. Oh, that engine noise. Is that another aircraft? Could be. I think. The great thing as well about Beyond ATC, which um, I say at some point I'm sure we'll be able to showcase it for you. Um, so like now we obviously set off on VATSIM, uh, but we're flying in a part of the world where there is just no ATC or anything like that. You could if you wanted now come off VATSIM, launch Beyond ATC and start mid-flight. Um, it will support that. I tested that out yesterday and it, uh, it worked well. So, less than an hour to go, uh, according to uh, according to the plan. Let's have a bit more of a look at, um, <coughs> at this airport and uh, approach, just because it's, it's all new to us. 
So yeah, so we're gonna come in via um, Zavis fly. Uh, I think we're flying to uh, we're flying a twelve mile arc. Hang on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Uh, yes, that's right. So, fourteen miles out from SHT. If you were wondering what I was counting there, can you see how the waypoint is? Uh, it telling us there it's fourteen miles distance, fourteen miles from Sarah Hotel Tango. Well, if I now have a look in the uh, in the box, so hang on just so you get a complete picture. So you can see we fly Zavis, which is obviously up uh, up here. And then the next waypoint here is D314N. Right. What that actually is, is a bearing of 314. There you can see the radial. And a distance of 14 miles. So that is exactly what this is. A distance, 314 is the uh, the radial, and the N is the miles, and this is what you count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. The N, and 14 miles. So there's a bit of uh, boring information for you. So if ever you see waypoints like this, they're not just randomly made up. They do actually, um, they do actually mean something. Uh, so, yeah, we fly that, we then fly an arc, and say the lowest we can get down to is uh, 2,400 feet. And then after that, we fly Xeros, then Oskim. We want to be 2,400 feet, and... I think we'll do a... Uh, we want to be stabilised by 7 miles before final approach is kicking in. Because, you know, with only 7 miles to go, I don't want to be flaps 2 at that point. So, before we uh, capture final approach mode, um, yeah, we'll make sure that we are flaps... Uh, probably flaps, flaps full. We'll do a landing check in a moment. Uh, flaps four, and then once we're headed down, well, flaps three, sorry, and then once we're headed down and we're happy, uh, gear down, flaps four. It's quite a shallow descent angle as well, isn't it? 2.87. Uh, 2 Let's have a little look at the runway itself, what information we've got. Uh, so, yeah, it's not very long, there's no threshold. Uh, if we can get off there at the right, that'd be great. I mean, it's not a massive airport, is it? Look at that. We're landing uphill as well. 45 metres wide. That's it. That's literally all there is to it. DC, when could I do a test flight from beyond ATC? That depends on the developers. <laughs> Random <laughs> birds. It's going to be night time, so there's going to be a bit of a black hole effect as well, I think, coming in over the sea. I don't imagine there to be too many uh, lights just here. Thought we might get there yesterday, but with the new scenery, we had the nightclub there, which uh, actually helped us a little bit. VOR is there to the left, windsock as well. Uh, have we got pappies on runway 23? Yes, we do. We do have pappies. They're three degree pappies as well, so they're not quite the same as the approach path. Oh man, that got dark quickly. So we are over Greece now, anyway. So.
So can we get some weather? I'm going to challenge you guys sat watching in the chat. Anyone get me uh, the latest weather for our airport? Um, the code is Lima Golf Sierra Tango. Anyone get some uh, some weather for there? I've got no Meta available. I've got no TAF available either. It's going to be interesting. I'll leave that to you guys, my uh, pilot's monitoring, to try and sort that out. Right, we'll do a fuel check as well. So, we've just passed Kilo Fox November. fuel did we take? Jamie, the code is Lima Golf Sierra Tango. Uh, we took 7.5 tons, which is uh, 600 tons extra. Uh, sorry, 600 kilograms extra. Uh, and we've just passed uh, Kilo Fox November. Catalonia. Uh, so we just have about 4.6, 4.7 tons in the tank. I've got 4.9 in the tank, so fuel check is good. <coughs> hey, Leanna, good to see you. That's the wrong airport, but thanks. Is that the closest one? To be fair, Heraclon probably is the closest one, which makes sense. So that's what we're going to use. Maybe this airport's closed in real life at the moment, which, yeah, probably is. Mark also getting Heracle on as well. It's a bigger airport, makes sense. So, um, what's that weather? 300 at 13. Temperature, 16 degrees. Q and H, 1017. 58.5 tonnes landing weight, let's just check that. Yeah, that's probably about right, 58 and a half tons. Might want to be a bit more conservative, just in case. Because we have got a bit more fuel on than planned. Maybe go 58.7. Let's try it. So, we've done it uh, with medium poor condition code, landing distance required is greater than what's available. Alright, so we're going to use thrust, uh, uh, reverse idle is not going to work for us. So what we're actually going to do then is we're going to use dry figures, of course. Um, flap full, flap 3 is not going to work, so flaps full. And auto brake medium. Yeah, that's what we're Okay, that's fine. Uh, heat, will there be gluten-free food on this flight? Yes, if you pay for it. That sun's well and truly gone now, isn't it? So, this is my last stream of the week because I'm uh, once again night stops this weekend. 
What uh, what you guys got planned for the weekend? Anything good? Just doing a quick check to see if we've got any ATC knocking about, which we haven't, sadly. Oh, Mark, yeah, of course. <laughs> Are you doing that Sunday morning? Uh, Yardi, you're working. You love your job, Yardi. You're dispatching aircraft. DC says I can fly all weekend on flight sim because my wife's got pneumonia. Oh, <laughs> DC, that's that's not good. I mean, well done for making the best of a bad situation. I hope she's okay though. You can't ask her to be your cabin crew though, and you know, bring her in, uh, bring in cups of tea and such. Oh, Yari, you can be sad if your mates are going out. Fair enough. Hey, go to Leinster. Hope you're doing well. Well, all my kids at the moment are at their swimming lessons, so... Go there, get wet, scream the place down for a bit. If they're lucky, they might learn how to swim. Uh, Jack says, after a whole week flying the Phoenix aircraft, this weekend I will swap planes so I can forget it all again <laughs> and then have to le relearn it. Uh, hey, Andy says, sorry, Mr. Star, I don't always get the YouTube notifications for some reason. I think they're a bit hit and miss, aren't they, sometimes? I don't know how they work or not. Obviously, make sure they're the turned on, etc. But your notifications, but it's it's all you can do, really. All right, box says we should be there in about forty-five minutes. <laughs> Yadi, you get to play with planes all day. What's not to love? Absolutely right. Not sure play with them is the right phrase, but. Yeah, right, we can see top of the descent as well, just coming in now on, uh, on the top of your navigation display. So that's good. I see as well that the Mini FCU units are now all sold out a couple of weeks back. I'm hoping it would be nice to see the Mini EFIS come out soon. Hey David, thank you for the sub, appreciate that. Uh, Emma, have I ever flown into Canton? Con Con try again. To Contin. No, I've uh, I don't believe I have. Uh Lana says I didn't get on with swimming lessons as a kid. Coach or whatever it was got fed up and threw us into the water. <laughs> Took me a long time to get comfortable with water. Yeah, I bet you then went home and watched Jaws, didn't you? <laughs> Uh, Chalty, will the 757 model ever be available? They're working on one, Chalty. Yeah, one's coming out. Who's making it? Come on, chat, help me out. The name escapes me. Leanna, I bet it was traumatic. I hope you could at least touch the floor. Andy, you're waiting on your mini FCU. Excellent. Good, good. So somewhere down there in a bit is uh, is Athens over there. Don't know if we'll see any aircraft departing out of it. Blue 
Gilbert757, Smoggy and the Noggy. Thank you, that's the one. Yeah, the dev's name just escaped me, but yeah, Chalty, they are working on a 757. And I think they're working on it to, you know, be up to a high standard, not just a, a skin. It is meant to be, you know, one that you could fly properly, so to speak. Speaking of films like Jaws, I, um, so the other day, so my, my, my eldest lad, he's nine, and um, he quite likes occasionally to stay up a bit late on a weekend and watch, watch a film with us, um, particularly if my wife's working nights or uh, is busy. Um, and for a while now he's heard the music of Jurassic Park. Uh, and who wouldn't love the music of Jurassic Park? Um, and I've always said, no, you're too young to watch it, too young to watch it. Now, I remember being, when did, he, when did he come out? Was it 93, 94? So I'd have been about 9, uh, 9, 10. And um, I remember going to the cinema to watch it, which is an experience in itself. And. Can anyone ever? I'm, I'm not doing. I'm surely not doing any spoils for anyone here. If you've never seen Jurassic Park, tough, because I'm going to ruin it for you. Um, but the, the first Jurassic Park, that 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 moment where the T-Rex escapes and uh, eats the guy on the toilet. You you all remember that scene? I remember when that film came out and you saw something like that. It was like, oh my god! And I remember watching that in the cinema and. Yeah, it, you know, it, it, nine years old, that scared me. Uh, ex exactly as it should have done, exactly how Steven Spielberg wanted you to feel. Um, kudos to him. So yeah, nine years old, it was, I thought Jurassic Park was a scary film. Um, and so he asked me the other day, you know, can, can I watch Jurassic Park? I thought, well, you know, you're about the same age I was when I watched it. Um, yeah, go on then. Let's let's settle down and watch this. So we turned the lights out, got Jurassic Park on, started uh, started watching it. Um, I had to keep explaining a few things because if you remember Jurassic Park, it starts off quite slow for for a youth watching it. You know, it's talking about um, cell division and uh, DNA and genetically modifying frogs, etc. Uh, so I had to just explain things in basic terms, keep them interested. Anyway, it got... The, the, the scene came up. The T-Rex the escaped and it was so well done, remember? It wasn't it wasn't CGI, you know, they were puppets and proper animatronics, that, that kind of thing. And, uh, and yeah, it... Uh, I thought, right, here we go, and he snuggled up to me watching it. Anyway, the... The toilet fell open, the guy sat there, on the toilet, the T-Rex looks at him, I wait for the reaction from uh, from my lad, the T-Rex jumps down, bites him in half, and uh, shakes him about. Do you know what my lad did? He burst out laughing, uncontrollable laughter. Not in the slightest bit scared, not terrified, not horrified, not gripping my hands or the edge of the seat eyes blazing wide open and I've just thought I've just I have been waiting for this moment for for a couple of years since he's wanted to watch this film that is not how I wanted him to react and all it told me was that clearly kids are far too desensitized now compared to what they used to be when we were younger I'm starting to sound old but there we are and, uh, yeah, as I'm just telling that little anecdote, reading through the comments, uh, Aspect says, yeah, it was quite a moment, and he was the same. The animatronics even today are, are brilliant. Mark says, the spitting dinosaur used to scare me when the fangs came out of its neck. Yeah, he watched that. He, he wasn't bothered. Uh, the tension in the kitchen with the raptors as well. Yeah, brilliant. 
Uh, DC Girl says, my youngest son cried for days at the first sight of flushed away the cartoon because someone flushed him down the toilet. <laughs> Sorry, DC, I shouldn't laugh at that, but... Yeah. I was like, come on, kid. If you're going to laugh at Jurassic Park, that's it, mate. We're going to sit down and watch The Omen. And he says I'm in the remake Geriatric Park. <laughs> uh, my username says Jurassic Park series is the thrill is in the chases. That again is true. I mean, I love all the Jurassic Parks. Um, number three was a bit weak, wasn't it? But yeah, it's fine. I just. I just wanted to see some fear of the whites of my kids' eyes. Just just a little bit. Just so I could say, hey mate, it's only a film, it's not real. Didn't have to do that. Brendan says my parents let me watch The Exorcist when I was nine. Big mistake, didn't sleep for a month. <laughs> yeah, I think The Exorcist might have been a bit much for a nine-year-old. <laughs> Kudos for your parents' optimism, though, in how well you might be able to handle it. <laughs> oh, right. Well, let's brief this approach. Um, let's set the box up. We've got top of the is about 80 miles away. Uh, so we've, we've checked the flight plan. That's, uh, that's all looking good and fine. Only thing I might want to change then is if we just have a look at uh, just pop a speed constraint in there 180 just to help our profile get down etc uh, Radnav page we have the Sierra Hotel Tango VOR the DME part of this is working hey Elliot good to see you team simple yeah it is a brand new route oh, good fun with a VOR approach. Alright, boxes, uh, boxes set up. Uh, uh, Chalty, do I remember ambulances waiting outside cinemas? No. What was that for? What film was that? Uh, teams of all, will this be? Yeah, so this this is a new flight that they will be operating. I thought we'd just check it out. And most flights, if uh, uh, to the Greek Isles, particularly low cost carriers, a lot of them operate, so they get there quite late at night, which is well, it's not going to be late at night, is it? Tonight, but it's going to be dark. Local time at the moment is eighteen thirteen, so nearly quarter past six in the evening local time at the moment. Is that right? I thought it would be later than that. Oh, Chalty, there was ambulances waiting outside the cinemas at The Exorcist. Were there? I'm... I, I don't know if I've ever seen The Exorcist. I might have been a bit too young. When that came out. Team Simple, you flew to Crete two years ago and it ended in a hospital visit. Oh dear. That's not good. Hope it wasn't an expensive visit. Right, so the box is all set up. Let's just talk through how we are going to do the um, how we're going to do and manage the approach. Then, um, so let's just get this up. All right, so we are. Uh, in fact, do you know what? I've said the box is all set up. It's not all set up at all. I haven't put uh, I haven't put the weather information in. Could someone just grab me the latest weather for uh, Heracleon Airport, please? And we'll uh, we'll pop that in in a moment. Uh, whilst we're doing that, <coughs> we'll just talk through uh, this approach. So we're coming in Zavis to Juliet, um, which brings us round down on a 12-mile DME arc 
to Zeros. On that arc, the lowest we can get down to is 2,400 feet. We will be getting down nice and early. I'd like to be 2,400 by the time we get to Oskim. At Oskim, then, flaps 2. Once we leave Oskim, flaps 3. We'll get the gear down. Final approach mode will then be used. And uh, then, obviously, 7 miles through, we'll start to go down. And uh, by that point as well, hopefully we'll be able to see the uh, be able to see the runway, um, and then we're uh, then we're good. Uh, from the latest information, weather-wise, runway visual range should be fine, and our minimums are thirteen hundred feet. I just pop that in the box there as we uh, as we talk about it. We're doing a flaps full landing today. Uh, as it is quite a short runway, we've already worked out as well. We need to do use auto brake medium. I'm not going to be looking for the um, smoothest of touchdowns. We just want to get in and uh, and stop, <laughs> basically, uh, which is fine. Uh, it is a VOR approach, hence the uh, final approach mode. So a non um, non prison non-precision approach. Transition altitude is 6,000 feet. MSA as we're coming in will be at 4,000 4, feet. Uh, the glide path angle is 2.7, uh, sorry, 2.87, so it's a little bit shallower than, uh, than normal, which is fine. Now, if for some reason uh, any automation doesn't work and we're visual with the runway and we are happy, I will disconnect the autopilot and um, yeah, I'll just fly a nice visual approach. To be fair, when I'm happy and I can see stuff, I will probably um, probably do that uh, anyway. Uh, we will um, yeah, we'll get the autopilot off and just fly as normal. Final approach, of course, is two. Two, four. Airport might have to turn around and backtrack. There's nothing in the uh, chart information saying we can't do that on the runway. So if we've passed that apron, we can. We don't have to go all the way to the turning pad. We can turn on the runway, and the apron is there on the right. Obviously, backtracks will be there on the left. And I'm not sure about parking spaces. I don't even think there are, uh, are any actual parking spaces at this airport. No doesn't look like it. A bit like Innsbruck in that respect. Let's then have a look. That's how we're going to fly the approach. Let's have a look at the go-around procedure, uh, which is up here. So climbing, turn right, max speed 200 knots, so that's going to be flaps 1 in the turn. Uh, so we're heading 077, intercept and follow 32 radial, 18 miles out, and then right to enter the hold and pad. So, uh, yeah, there, uh, there we go. Basically, immediate right hand turn because, as we can see down here, there's terrain. All right, so that's everything briefed. Threats and error management. Well, number one um, is the train. Literally, just mentioned it. So, main thing is keep that in mind. Uh, should things go wrong, we need to make a right hand turn and uh, get back over the sea where we're nice and uh, nice and safe. Get back in the holding point. Uh, other things to mention: we're doing an early stabilised approach, so not a decelerated approach, stabilised one. Um, so let's uh, get down and make sure we are planned flaps two at Oskim and what was it 2,400 feet at Oskim as well, isn't it? Yeah, as we're coming in, 2,400 feet off skim, flaps 2, as we leave off skim, gear down, flaps 3, and uh, final approach board engaged. I think that's about it, MSA 4,000 feet, and, uh, and we're done. Uh, did anyone grab me the, uh, the weather for Lima Golf India Romeo? Send that off. Uh, 
so two nine zero at eleven. So probably a bit of a crosswind then from the right as we're coming in. Temperature sixteen. Q and H one zero one seven. Fat one three two. Okay. And top of the scent is pretty much there. Uh, so Team Simple just slipped on some rocks. Uh, needed stitches, they didn't use painkillers, and the insurance refused to pay. Of course they did. That's what insurances do. Uh, Pyro Blaster, trying to get Fly Temple Las Vegas Jetways to work with GSX. Make sure you've got them excluded in GSX, um, would be the first thing I would recommend. Uh, DC, how do you find the landing weight in uh, the McDo? It's not shown, you have to do some math. Add your zero fuel weight to your estimated fuel on board at your destination. That then is your, uh, is your landing weight. Old man! The flight has been uneventful. I mean, to be fair, the, the fun bit's coming up, isn't it? The landing. If you have enjoyed our long afternoon flight, then uh, please do hit that subscribe button for us. Not the subscribe button. <laughs> I'm hoping most of you are all subscribed anyway. Um, but yeah, hit the like button for me on the, uh, on the stream. Is there anyone watching who's not a current subscriber? Or anyone that's watching that's never seen us before? Who's just stumbled onto the channel by accident and is wondering what the hell is going on. Uh, Steve, will you be able to confine uh, vaccine with Beyond ATC? We were talking about that earlier. Yeah, the answer should be yes if, uh, if you need to. Right, speed descent 200 blue, down we go. So like for instance this flight now would be awesome, wouldn't it, with a bit of uh, with a bit of ATC. So is that Crete, the lights of Crete over there? Yeah, I think it is. Uh, Old Man says he's not had a chance to fly the new Phoenix aircraft since it updated. Looking forward to uh, taking it out for a test flight. Remember, you'll only be able to use the latest liveries. All your old liveries won't work anymore. And in the livery manager, make sure you set, um, make sure you uh, set in the settings 4K liveries. It will say you've got 8K liveries installed, but it's lying to you. A little bit of a bug there. Uh, Chief, making your way through A320 tutorials. Does the VNAV work yet for descent? Uh, yes, it does, in both the Phoenix and the Fly-by-Wire A320. Just got an aircraft there, uh, who's pretty much at our flight level. There he is. It's one of the things about flying to airports in Greece. A lot of them now still have non-precision approaches, so you've not got an ILS to uh, to mess around with. It's a VOR or an RNAV approach, which of course the Airbus handles sublimely. Uh, Chief, you've got two ways of doing it. You don't if you want to use the VNAV fully, then you'd stay in descent mode, which is what we're in now. Which 
I uh, I don't mind certainly for the start, but in a little bit I'm probably going to because I want to get down and be prepared for a, in, uh, a nice stabilised approach. We're probably going to go open descent, wind the speed up, and drop below that profile. Hey, Captain Shaquille, what's on the dinner menu tonight? Oh, I think it's Hunter's Chicken. I've got to go and cook it once we've landed. So if we have to go around or divert, my family are going to be really annoyed. Flight level 100. Oh, why are these linked? Hang on. Need to change that. Save. Mark, you love Hunter's Chicken. I love Hunter's Chicken. My kids really like it. What's not to love, Mark? Chicken? Bacon, cheese, and barbecue sauce. Absolutely right. Uh, Charles is a really tall engine is to run 757 engines. You used to book it twice. You booked twice the time so they could fly it as well. <laughs> Excellent. Organ Aviator, what is Hunter's Chicken? Okay, so a chicken breast with slices of cheese um, wrapped around it and then wrap bacon around it, coat it in a uh, barbecue sauce in a sh in a in a deep little dish, small little deep dish and then pop it in the oven and cook yeah beautiful served with chips salad carrots sweet corn Profile is still looking good. But as I say, we're going to drop beneath it in a moment. Right, fuel check. We've got four tons of fuel on board. What was the CNR for this flight, just out of interest? Should probably have looked at that at the start of the stream. Two point eight tons to get to Athens, fair enough. I will organ aviator, if you don't want the cheese, all you need to do is just have chicken and bacon then. <laughs> and then it'd be absolutely, absolutely fine for you. Right, thrust saddle over to Zent, as we've just uh, taken control of that a little bit. So we're nice and below that profile now, which is uh, which is fine. I'm quite happy now to pop that into VS mode. 1800 feet should do us. And then with no ATC, we can basically clear ourselves down to the platform altitude, which is 2400 feet. So we might as well do that. And then we can just look to see where that little arrow is positioning itself to help us get down. An ICD would be good, but today we're just going to make sure we can level off, slow down, and get configured for that uh, VOR approach. 
Well, man says it's crazy how many people bought the Mini FCU and then sell it. Really? Is there a black market on the Mini FCU? I can understand why. Highly in demand. Fantastic piece of kit. I've not seen any being sold anywhere, though. Clever Trevor says he's never going to sell his. No, I've never sold mine either. It's awesome. Okay, so approach checklist. Barrow Ref QH is 1017. The seatbelt signs are on. Minimum 1300. Auto brake medium EFP stop. Yeah, I can't wait for the EFIS as well. That's going to be brilliant. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we will shortly be landing. Please ensure your cabin bag is safely stowed with your laptop inside. Your tray table must be stowed, armrest down, and window blinds open. You now need to be seated with your seatbelt fastened, ready for landing. Please help us by handing in any rubbish newspapers or magazines that you do not want to take with you. The toilets are no longer in service. So anybody that's got a dodgy stomach now, tough. Um, my username, you set the auto brake at, at 17,000 feet? I set the auto brake when I did the calculation and uh, realised what we're doing. It Always do your approach briefing, you know, when you're in the cruise. Even if it's half an hour before you're going to start descending and then it's done forget about it well no don't forget about it obviously but <laughs> one less thing to do in a busy flight deck particularly here in the sim when you're working as a single single pilot Lena's now celebrating it's the weekend. It does feel like a Friday. It isn't. I'm I'm working away all weekend. So it's definitely not a Friday. Maybe it's because normally on a Friday afternoon I'll try and do a decent length uh, flight and stream, which is what we're doing today, isn't it? So. But yes, if you are just joining us, this is my last one for the week as I am away after this. So, back ooh, probably Tuesday next week. Monday if we're lucky. Elliot, it also feels like a Friday for you. Yes, but do you have to work tomorrow, Elliot? That's the thing. And there it is, Light of Crete. Come on, man. Thank you for the sub. Uh, oh, man, you just see one for sale now on a Facebook page. Ad. How much are they selling them for? Not that I need to buy another one. Hey, Captain Q, you are indeed just in time for approach and landing.
Right, thrust idle over descent, speed set 250, activate the approach phase. It's done. Lights on. VDEF scale is now showing on the primary flight display. That looks like a lot of wind turbines. Okay, let's start to reduce speed. Uh, username InfoVR uh, L7VDev shows up. Yeah, because the approach is programmed into the box, so we're still going to be using the autopilot and final approach mode. So a VOR landing is not, you know, using traditional nav aids and things. Just trying to work out if we're in the clouds. Pull speed brakes out a little bit. And then we can just start to see where we're going to level off. So we're going to do flaps one now. Speed's checked. Flaps one. Uh, Ian Clegg, there is a uh, full sort of <coughs> unboxing and setup guide on my uh, on the channel regarding the Thrustmaster. All depends what aircraft you're flying it with, as uh, as well. Hey, Caleb. What's the difference between RNAV and VOR? The way they are flown, not much. Speed one eight zero. No, Mark, you don't be late. See you soon, mate. Right, can't see the airport. Flaps two to help us get down. Speed's checked. One eight zero knots. Flap two. Uh, Count Shield, I have satellite based. Yeah, VOR is ground based. It is, but the way we fly them, particularly in the Airbus, I don't know about Boeing, but uh, we can still use the final approach mode because the approach is coded into the flight management computer. City of Traffic, Alpine 34 Alpha Mike is five miles north of Oskim for the VOR approach, runway 23.
think that might be our airport. Over that. Uh, Carriage Guilt, that's right, so we can still use final approach mode for this. We'll, we'll be turning that on in uh, in a moment. Just got speed brakes out of the moment, just as we're levelling off now for 2,400 feet. That's what we wanted. We wanted flaps 2 and 2,400 feet at Oskin, which is exactly what we've got. There we are. Speed, I'll start. Leveling off. Spoilers away. Push for manage speed. Uh, Ian, it is indeed true yeah, that pilots have to do a certain amount of auto lands every year. see the runway, we're visual with it. Doesn't say anything on my charts about it being an offset approach, but this does look a little bit offset, doesn't it? Final blue, approach nav. So, gear down. And flaps three. Speed's checked. Uh, Capture kill. Yeah, sounds uh, sounds very very similar. Wind is from uh, the right as we're as we're looking coming in. Here comes the VDEV. Uh, Paul, this is the CFM engine. Yeah, we're in now. And there we go. Final approach mode is uh, is captured. Missed approach altitude three thousand feet is set. Flaps full. Landing checklist. Come secured. Go around altitude 3,000 feet. You can memo. Landing no blue. So definitely a bit of a black hole effect, like we mentioned, isn't it? Flight directors off, autopilot off. Hundred above. Minimum. 
and continue. Just oversteered that centre line, let's get back on that. One thousand. So an 8-knot crosswind from the right as we're coming in. Almost a direct crosswind now. Five hundred. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Retard. Five. First applied for screen, decel, manual brakes. Oh, we don't have to backtrack. See you later, Cleaver. Remember guys, if you are on your way out, please do remember to hit that like button as uh, as you go. And of course you can also get yourself some amazing scenery from Innerbuilds, our channel partner, by checking out the link in the uh, video description and of course at the top of the, uh, the top of the chat. Looks like GSX doesn't want to work. Oh well, never mind. Uh, username, does the random also pop in the uh, the VOR? Yes, it does, yeah. I mean, to be fair, it's not flying it using the, um, the VOR radio beacon, um, as you would expect it to traditionally, because it's flying it almost like a, a, almost like a GPS approach, really. Like an RNAV approach. There was a marshaller there, but... Let's just park it somewhere. This is going to be an awful park, but... There's not actually any parking stands written down on the chart, so I didn't really know where we were going here. Let's see what the replay looks like anyway. So, parking brake is uh, just tidy up our aircraft. We haven't got any ground crew around us, so we've not fried anybody. That's the main thing. Right then. Ladies and gentlemen, the cabin crew will shortly be leaving their seats to perform safety-related duties. However, we ask that you remain seated until the fastened seatbelt sign has been switched off. Short taxi. Portable electronic we couldn't actually uh, shut the engines down just yet. Access may now be used. Please make sure that you take all your personal belongings with you, checking in the seat pocket, underneath the seat, and in the overhead lockers. Hey Christian, Do good to see you. When opening the lockers in case anything falls out. Smoking is not permitted until you reach a designated smoking area. On behalf of the captain and the crew, it has been our pleasure looking after you today. We'll let the PA our finish. The crew will help you complete your EasyJet journey. For the latest news, promotions, flight and destination information, check out our official Facebook page, Twitter or EasyJet app. Right, let's Having see 
Let's see what the runway, uh, the runway, let's see what the landing looked like on the runway. And we'll check this out. Always fun flying somewhere different. Yeah, Andy, I didn't really park that too well. We did just literally abandon that. <laughs> I was looking for a chart on Navigraph. There's, there's nothing there. I had absolutely no idea where we're going. Uh, Christian, is that one of the small... This three, isn't there? This is the most eastern um, airport on Crete. Hey, Watty. And Christian says he's worked 11 hours and now needs three litres of coffee. <laughs> Aircraft slowed down incredibly well there. Looked alright. Let's flip to the other side. Lots of wind power in Crete looking at this. Yeah, Christian, I wouldn't land at a military airport. I can't fly military planes. There's a military airport just there. I think that's what that is that you're looking at now, at the, uh, the south side of the, uh, the airport. Shall we be a bit cheeky? And I'll play out the replay, but um, to finish, shall we set the time to day? See what it looks like at day. Because uh, I think that scenery could look rather nice. Oh, Christian is also civil. <laughs> Make your mind up. Christian, I knew you was going to ask for snow. I'm not doing snow, <laughs> but I will do daytime. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a, uh, a pleasure, as always. And uh, we might just go sunset. Oh, yes, yeah, sunset. A bit later. Like, like that. Gorgeous. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed our stream today. Huge shout-out, as always, to our uh, channel members and supporters uh, for um, your continued support of the channel. A reminder, as well, of course, before you go, you can also support the channel by... Cancel those loans. You can also support the channel as well by uh, getting yourself some inbuilt uh, scenery and aircraft using the links in the video description and pinned into the chat as well. And until next week, then I bid you all farewell. I hope you have a great weekend. And yeah, thanks so much for flying with us. See you know. Uh, see you on the next one. Have a great weekend, everyone. Goodbye.